G'day guys, Nick here from CPAP Reviews. Welcome to part three of three on our series on the ResMed AirSense 10 machine by ResMed. Uh, in this part, we are gonna be looking at how to get into the clinical menu. Uh, this is the menu that's a bit more advanced from the patient menu. It's the menu where you can change things like the mode of the machine, whether you want it to run in auto or CPAP. Um, the pressures and things like that. So it just gives you a bit more access to the, the back end of the machine um, and it gives you a few more options um, than your standard basic menu that you're probably accustomed to. So in order to get into the, um, the clinical menu, what we first have to do is press and hold in the click wheel plus also the top um, start stop button at the same time. Oh, sorry, it's the home button and this button. So you press and hold those two buttons in simultaneously, keep holding them in, and then it says, all of a sudden, exit clinical menu. So we're in now. As soon as that comes up, it says exit clinical menu, we're into the advanced settings. So now when we click these settings, they're gonna be diff a little bit different to what they said in part two. All right, so let's just go through some of them here. The first one here is the mode, okay? And it says auto set. If you have an auto set machine, uh, I suggest you run an auto set. If you have a fixed pressure machine, um, it's probably only gonna have the fixed pressure mode. But uh, if you've got the auto set one, you can go between CPAP there and auto set. All right, um, so we're just gonna keep it on auto set. Uh, if we go down a little bit, then you've got your max pressure that says at the moment 20. So that's the upper limit of the automatic algorithm. And then you've got below that min pressure, which is your lowest limit, okay? That at the moment, four is as low as you can go and 20 on the max is as high as you can go. So that's the widest range available. You can't go any more than that. Um, but what some people like to do is um, they might wanna increase the min pressure a little bit if they feel like there's not quite enough air coming through the mask, if it's feeling a bit suffocating, they might increase the, the min pressure. Um, or if they if you feel like the pressure's just getting too high of a night time, it's too intense, and it's waking you up, then you can use the data, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute, to actually bring down your max pressure to a point that's more comfortable and still maintain a good apnea high popping index. So you can see there I'm bringing it down 13, 14, bring it down to a level. What that's gonna do is it's gonna cap, <coughs> excuse me, it's gonna cap the auto algorithm so that it can't go above that value. Um, and this means that you know, there might be a period of the night where it's just getting too strong and you might need that pressure to control the apnea, but it's no good to you if it's gonna constantly wake you up, cause mass leaks, wake up the missus or the husband or whoever. Um, so it's about getting that nice fine balance. I talk about this a fair bit between getting good therapy, but also getting good sleep, com like, you know, good sleep comfort. Um, you don't want the machine to be, you know, at a point where, yeah, it's controlling every single apnea, but to do so, it's waking you up every 15 minutes because the air is just so intense, okay? Find that happy balance, and that way you'll be much better off. So further down there, so I'll just set that to 14. Further down, we've got the mask, which is uh, pillows at the moment. You can change that full face nasal, uh, if you like. Um, go a bit further down, we've got the comfort features coming up now. So we had ramp time, which is auto. That was also in the patient, um, the patient uh, settings that we, in part two. We've got the start pressure, um, so we can change if we're wanting to do a ramp, what that pressure starts at. Um, we have EPR, which is our like that pressure relief um, I was talking about. So we've got that on at the moment. I would suggest you have that on. Um, you can change the EPR, so the pressure relief, um, whether it's full time or just during the ramp period. I suggest have it all the time. You don't want to just in the beginning have it right through the, the night if you if you can, and then you've got your level. So EPR level can go between one, two, and three. The more you have it, the higher the number, the more the machine is gonna drop the pressure, the higher the pressure, uh, the higher the number, the more the machine's gonna drop the pressure as you breathe out. So as you exhale, <coughs> if that number's on three, it's gonna drop the pressure a lot to make it really easy for you to breathe out. If you have it on two, it's gonna drop it a little bit less, on one, a little bit less again, and then you can obviously turn EPR off if you don't like it. Some people say that it throws off their breathing a little bit with the machine go between sort of full pressure and then dropping the pressure and full pressure and dropping the pressure. Other people say it makes the machines a little bit noisier. Experiment around, find an EPR level that's good for you, whether it be off one, two, or three. 
Um, then we come down to climate control auto. We went through this in part two, the tube temperature there. <coughs> um, you can change the tube temperature. In winter, you obviously want that pretty warm. In summer, you might not need it as hot. Um, same, depending on where you're living, whether you're in Queensland or Melbourne, just find a tube temperature that's comfortable, okay? Don't be afraid to change that. A, B, antibacterial filter. Uh, just excuse me there. That's an antibacterial filter. Um, so not many people would probably have one of those on um, to begin with, so generally have that as no. Uh, to go down here, options. Essentials you want on plus, don't have it um, on just on, have it on plus. That gives you more access to the da more data on the actual home screen um, when you're in the patient setting. So have that as plus. Smart start you want is on, that's the automatic on, automatic off. And the reminders, you can set the reminders there if you want to. So to change your filter, um, you know, it's pretty straightforward to go through there and change, you know, put your, you know, you can put in a date for the machine to actually remind you to change certain things if you if you need to. Um, then you've got configuration, uh, the, you know, the language, the date, the time, uh, the pressure units, the temperature units. So that's just configuration, leave them pretty, you know, standard, okay, temperature units is Celsius, pressure units is centimetres, H2O, leave that as standard, okay. Um, and then you can erase all the data on the machine if you want to, and then you can go into the about the machine, which will tell you things like the serial number, etc. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the clinical settings. Um, you know, the main thing here to look at is obviously the, the, the therapy settings, okay, being, especially if it's an auto set between the min and the max pressure. So what you can do with that, if we go back just to home, if we go to our sleep report, this is in the clinical menu still, if we go to our sleep report, it's going to have their events per hour, so the apnea hypopnea index. If we scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, you come to this point where it says pressure. Okay, and that pressure number is going to be what's called the 90th percentile pressure, which basically means 90% um, of the night, the pressure is below that level. So only 10% of the night, the pressure is above that level. So we can use that number as a guide to put our set our upper limit. So what we can do if we're finding the pressure is getting too high of a night time, check out what that, that number is over the week. Okay, that pressure. Check out what that number is. And then what I want you to do is go back to go to your settings and change your max pressure to that value. All right, so say that 90th percentile pressure came in at 12, change that max value to 12. All right, and then go to home and then exit clinical menu. Run the machine for a night and have a look at your apnea hypopnea index the next day. All right, if the apnea hypopnea index is still um, nice and low, like if it's still below five, then you haven't capped that auto max too low, all right? As long as that apnea hypopnea mix is below five, you can keep bringing that cap, that, that level down. If the, pre, if the apnea hypopnea index starts to go up, so if that starts to go five, six, seven, eight, then you might have capped that upper limit of your auto too low. You might need to bring that up a little bit, okay? But you can fiddle around with that to make the therapy more comfortable. All right, especially if you're someone who's struggling with the high pressures, you know, don't be afraid to get in there, cap your limits, but just keep an eye on your apnea hypopnea index and make sure that it's not going too high. All right, I hope you've got some uh, bit of uh, insight into that. Uh, it's a little bit more tricky than your standard patient settings, but at the same time, if you spend a few minutes um, and you go through it, I'm sure you can make your therapy a bit more enjoyable, a bit more comfortable, and that, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Um, getting obviously control of your sleep apnea, but at the same time, you know, making sure you're nice and comfortable because sleep uh, CPAPs are pain in the ass uh, to sleep with for everybody. Um, so if you can make it just that bit more comfortable, I think um, you're going to be better for it in the future. As always, thanks for watching the video. Make sure you uh, click on the right hand top right hand uh, corner there to subscribe um, to our channel. That way you get up to date info on all the videos we do on all the products, and you can um, yeah get. Uh, Get informed. Cheers. All the best.